What is the page rank? In order to understand this, we have to explore what the internet looked like before things such as Google. In the days of the early internet, an apt analogy would be to consider the internet as an ocean with lots of little fish in it. Internet trollers, T-R-A-W-L-E-R-S, were people who would then go through the internet, find links that might be interesting or otherwise relevant, and post them on their particular sites. A famous example of this is Yahoo, which is somehow still a thing today. But one of the problems that eventually started cropping up was too many new things, too much internet. And so new things such as video, photos, video games started cropping up and trollers ran out of time and ability to search through all of this stuff and keep relevant information flowing. In order to combat this problem, Sergey Brim and Larry Page devised a, a algorithm known as the PageRank algorithm that allowed them to ultimately found Google. The idea behind this algorithm was to do all of that searching automatically and then assign some rank or a page rank to each result. Now, this is actually pretty simple in principle. It's just a little harder in terms of math. Let's say we were doing a search for eraser shavings. We might get four results nowadays, hopefully more. But early on, it would be, where did they go? My dog ate an eraser. Ten fun things to do with erasers and cooking with erasers. Now, this top result, where do they go, seems kind of relevant. So that would get a lot of links to it, probably on various pages such as Yahoo. And thus, the page rank algorithm would give it a high value or a high rank. Cooking with erasers? probably shows up in very few places, and so the page rank, page rank algorithm would give it fewer results. And it would work like this for all possible results, for all possible possibilities. And so then each one would be given an A, a B, a C, a D, so on and so forth. And you'll see later on in our example why we chose these particular letters in these particular spots. In order for the PageRank matrix to represent the entire World Wide Web, Larry Page and Sergey Brin wanted a way to account for the interconnectedness of each website. Additionally, they wanted to remove useless website and links in the representation. They wanted to remove link farms and sinks. Link farms are websites that have multiple links in order to raise its page rank, and sinks are websites that don't have any outlinks, so once you click on them, you can't escape the page. Additionally, the PageRank matrix also removes self-referencing, which is a link that a web, sur web surfer would click on and then end up on the same page. In the next drawing, you'll see how no self-referencing comes into play, where along the diagonals, there are all zeros. The adjacency matrix. In order to show the interconnectedness can be represented in a matrix, we're going to use the example of the relationship of three friends and figure out whom is the most likable. Within the friend group, each friend points at whom they think is the most likable. To capture all the information, we represent their matrix, their relationship with the matrix as follows. Note there are all zeros along the diagonals to prevent the friends from voting for themselves as the most likable. Each row is who receives likes. For example, Clyde's row vector is 000, zero, zero meaning that nobody likes Clyde. Each column vector represents who they like. For example, Clyde likes both Carlos and Sam, thus Clyde's column vector is 011. Additionally, the matrix is normalized to account for people who split their vote and are not given more influence. For example, since Clyde thinks both Carlos and Sam are likable, his vote is split in half, thus his column vector is now 0, 1 half, 1 half. A similar process like this is used to represent sites and their links to one another. So somehow that adjacency matrix is relevant to page rank. The most basic level, we want to calculate the value of a blob based on who else points to it. Clyde points to Sam and Carlos points to Sam, but we want to make sure that the value of all these points are equal, so we must take into account the fact that Clyde points twice, or while Carlos points only once. This gives Sam a basic page rank of three halves. But the true goal of page rank is to calculate the probability that a random web surfer 
who clicks links to other pages at random, will arrive at a given web page, or in our case, a blob friend. To do this, we assume the initial probability that a random surfer arrives at one of our blob friends to be one over the total number of blobs in our system. In this case, one over three. Those other fractions on the right correspond to the number of points that each blob participates in. In general, this idea combined with the idea of summing the number of points to each blob results in our page rank formula that the page rank of some web page is the sum of all the page ranks of the linking pages divided by the number of links that comes from each page. So putting all this information together, we get that the page rank of Sam is going to be equal to one third divided by two plus one third divided by one those corresponding each from Clyde and Carlos. Um, this ends up being equal to 3, 6, or 1 half, which works out if we take a look again at our adjacency matrix, where the vector is made up of the page ranks for each blob. You can see we get 3 halves, which is what we got before. Woo. Now we can look at an example. In this example, A, B, C, and D are websites. Now we could draw a graph where each circle represents a website. So we have four circles, A, B, C, and D. We could draw arrows between these circles to represent links between the websites. We see A links to two websites, B links to one, C links to three, and D links to two websites. Now we can rewrite that to show which websites linked to which. We see A links to D and C. We see B links to only A. C links to A, B, and D. And last, D links to B and C. Now we can rewrite these as column vectors where the entries are zero and one. One represents a link, zero represents no link. So we see A links to two websites, so it has two ones. And those ones are in the third and fourth entry because it has a link to websites C and D. And B has a one in the first entry because it has a link to A. These are binary vectors because all entries are zero and one. Now we normalize our column vectors. We normalize A by multiplying each entry by a factor of one half. Each entry is multiplied by a factor of one half because there are two links. B only has one link, so each entry is multiplied by one. C has three links, so each entry is multiplied by a factor of one third. And D has two links, so each entry is multiplied by a factor of one half. Now we can use our vectors to form a matrix. To form this matrix, each row is one of our vectors. So row one is vector A, row two is B, row three is C, and row four is D. A is our adjacency matrix after it's been normalized. Our adjacency matrix would have all zeros and ones in the entry, but we see that it's still self-similar since we have all zeros in the diagonal. eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a transformation A. Here's a brief recap of what eigenvectors and eigenvalues are. Eigenvectors are vectors which remain on the same span after the transformation is applied, and eigenvalues are the factor by which they are stretched or squished. 
Looking at the diagram, vector 1 is an eigenvector. This is because after applying transformation A to vector 1, AV1 remains on the same span as vector 1. On the other hand, vector 2 is not an eigenvector. This is because after applying A to vector 2, AV2 is not on the same span as vector 2. The adjacent Markov matrix, which you're using for the page rank algorithm, represents a system which is known as a Markov chain. Due to this property, applying the matrix A over and over to the vector will slowly bring vector V to the eigenspace. As shown on the diagram, we can see vector V slowly approaching the orange eigenvector. The initial vector in our problem, R0, is a vector with equal probabilities. We then apply matrix A again and again to vector R0. This process is known as the power method. For the page rank algorithm, this usually takes about 52 iterations. 52 iterations until what? Until we eventually have the same input and output vectors. Once this occurs, and our vector reaches this point, it is known as steady state. We have a solution where the eigenvalue is equal to 1 and the eigenvector is the page rank vector. This vector is the most accurate vector accounting for all the relationships between each website and all of the links. Now we can use our link matrix to find the probability that a random user will end up on one of our four websites. To do this, we use mul matrix multiplication, where we'll multiply our link matrix by a vector we'll call R0. The entries of R0 will be one quarter, because there's a 25% chance the random user will pick any of our websites. Now we'll write out the matrix multiplication. Where we'll multiply A, our link matrix, by R0, our vector. By multiplying the link matrix by R0, we get another vector, which we'll call R, the subscript 1. Now we'll do the matrix multiplication again, but this time we'll multiply our link matrix by our second R vector. When we do this matrix multiplication out, we get another vector, which we'll call R of the subscript 2. Now we repeat this process where we continue to multiply our link matrix by our new R value. Since we want to continue multiplying our link matrix by our new R value, we could write it as an equation. Our equation would be a to the nth power times ro equals rn, where rn is an eigenvector for the value eigenvalue 1. So now we could use a computer to calculate large values of n to find out when the decimal stops fluctuating. So here we see the value of r when n equals 10. And here we see the value of r when n equals 100.
this calculation shows us that this r value is an eigenvector. And what does the eigenvector tell us? The entries of the eigenvector tell us the rank of A, the rank of B, which is the second entry, the rank of C, which is the third entry, and the rank of D, which is the fourth entry. We can see that these sum to 1, and that's the rank of each website.